Well, welcome to those of you brave souls that are still here on Friday morning. This is impressive. This is, this is a dedicated group. I'm impressed. Well, this workshop, hopefully you can tell, is putting the power in PowerPoint. And, and Callie Heron, she's with the University of Wisconsin Discovery Farms program. And she's the communications manager there. And so, uh, and if you don't know about the Discovery Farms program, it's a pretty, it's a pretty amazing um, on-farm research system. And I don't know if you had more you were going to say about it, but it's a, it's a project that involves a lot of people. And it's nice to see that um, your expertise is part of that mix as well. So with that, Callie, take us through how to actually do these better. We should put you at the start of a conference, I think, <laughs> shouldn't we? Thank you, Jill. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, everyone, for, like Jill said, sticking around. I really appreciate it. This is an exciting topic to me, so I'm glad to see a bunch of people to be able to talk about it with. Uh, like Jill mentioned, I'm the Communications Manager for UW Discovery Farms. We are a program of UW Extension that works with farmers around the state of Wisconsin on water quality. So we focus on collecting data, on being farmer-led. We have a 16-member steering committee and on outreach. So the outreach part of our program is what I'm in charge of. Well, so my next slide will blank anyway, so we'll just start with that, which is kind of funny to talk about a PowerPoint presentation and building a good PowerPoint and not really start with the PowerPoint slide. But as you'll see in your handout, um, one of my first points is to remember to ask yourself, do you even need a PowerPoint? Is that really the appropriate thing to do? I know the default for me for a long time and the default for my team is if you're giving a presentation, let's make it a PowerPoint presentation. But that doesn't always have to be the case. If you're working with a small group of people, it can be appropriate to not use PowerPoint. Um, it really just depends on the setting and depends on what you're trying to achieve. If discussion is your main goal, then you might want to consider something else. What we use a lot at Discovery Farms nowadays is we have a handout that really matches our PowerPoint presentation or we'll use a handout instead of a PowerPoint. And we get a lot of multi-use from that. So we can put it on our website, we can share it with media who weren't there but are interested in the content. We can take a portion of a handout and create it into a full-blown article. It's really valuable to us. It also allows us to not put so much text in our PowerPoint presentations because we can leave the audience with something they can look at later, and we don't have to try and put everything on a slide so they can reference the slide later. Instead, they can reference the handout. I like to remind myself and remind my team that creating PowerPoint presentations or doing anything, really, the cliche holds true. It's a journey. It's not a destination. And so today, I'm going to walk you through our progression as a team over the past several years. I'm going to give you two examples, a data example of a slide that we've changed multiple times, and then I'm going to give you kind of a background to the slide example. So we're going to walk through both of those, and then for the last half, we're going to take what we've learned and put it into practice. So you're going to have to get a little closer together, <laughs> and I have a bunch of paper and markers, and we're going to try to create our own PowerPoint slides about the waste work. But first, a little history about Microsoft PowerPoint. It was created in the 1980s, and it was really innovative because, I don't know if you remember the 1980s, but we didn't have all the technology that we have today. So it was really difficult to combine text and photos. And so PowerPoint was really exciting because it allowed you to do that, and it allowed you to share that information to a group of people. But unfortunately, PowerPoint hasn't really changed with the time. It still basically looks the same as it did in the 1980s. The default slides are about the same. The structure of the default with the topic, subtopic, or title <coughs> text approach hasn't really changed. And when it was created, it wasn't based on the way people learn. It wasn't based on the way people retain information. You'll see, you can take this home, but you'll see at the top of your handout a brief discussion about how we understand and process information. And it's really difficult for an audience to read a slide and listen to you at the same time. They're there to hear you talk. They're not there to read text. So that's one thing to keep in mind, um, that PowerPoint really sets you up to add a good amount of text on a slide. Uh, another thing is, when you add a 
that visual, it's much more memorable. People retain information when there's a visual combined with a message. So with all that in mind, we'll walk through our data example. And we'll begin by looking at the title portion of the slide. What I'm hoping to achieve today is to give you some advice on restructuring a slideshow. So maybe in the future, when you create a new slide deck, you'll change it to a different format. But I'm also hoping to give you some simple <coughs> suggestions that you can use with your current slide decks. Small color changes you can make, small tweaks that aren't this big destination part of the journey. So when you look at this title, so this slide kind of looks like a lot of slides you'll see. Um, the title doesn't really tell you the main point of the slide. And that top portion of the slide is the most valuable real estate. That top left corner is where pretty much everyone is going to look first. So you really want to use that top left corner wisely. And in this scenario, I would say that we're really not using it effectively. You know, people get distracted when they're listening to you, they stop paying attention, they look at they look at their cell phones, and when they look back up at the slide, they kind of see the topic, but they don't right away see the main point. So instead, we've changed it to this. So this is what you would call an assertion rather than a topic or a title. And so now, you know, if people look around or do whatever, quit paying attention, and they look back up, they see your main point, they see your main assertion, the major thing you're trying to achieve with this slide. You'll also notice that every word is not capitalized and it's left aligned. What we really want to do is make a PowerPoint presentation as easy on our audience as possible. And surprisingly, you know, if you capitalize each of the words or if you keep it centered, it's a little bit harder for our brains to process that information. And why make things more difficult than they need to be? Now we'll talk a little bit about the text. And what I try to tell my team and what we try to achieve and don't always accomplish is to just completely remove the text. I know text can be a reminder for us. It's also really important if people are going to reference your slides later to make sure some of that content is there. It's really difficult for us to take out some of the words we have there, but we try to at least reduce them. And instead, we place some of that content in a handout. So that gets us away from this like need to have people look at a slideshow later. Now, we'll talk about the right side, so the like visual piece of, of the slide. Now you can see that we're moving away from that topic, subtopic, title, text, photo slide, and into more of an assertion, evidence-based approach. And so from what I've read, um, they've done some studies where they show students assertion, evidence-based slides, and so show students and teach off of topic, subtopic slides, or title, text slides, and they see that people learn much better when that assertion, evidence-based approach is used. And so we as a program are really trying to do that with our slides. Now you can see we've got it, right? We've got like our main point, and then we've got this um, visual to go along with it. But there's still room for improvement. There's still steps we can take to clean this up. Because one thing you really want to do is you want to continually try to simplify your slide. Don't put extra stuff in there. Don't make it 3D when it really doesn't need to be 3D. In fact, the 3D kind of makes it harder to see how big each slice is. So take the 3D out. That's a simple change that has a big impact and can make it much more clear for your audience to understand. Then simple things like taking out a border can really have a big impact. Now your words are more connected to your visual. That extra little piece is just taken away. There's really no purpose to have that border in there. So when you look at your slide, Think about what you can remove. Think about what really isn't serving you any purpose. Another thing to think about is use of color. So in this slide, we're really trying to emphasize the non-frozen brown period. And when you've got one thing in green and one thing in blue, it kind of those colors carry equal weight. But really, we're trying to emphasize one piece of that pie. So let's emphasize it. Let's maybe make the other piece of the pie a shade of gray. Let's make it something else so what we want to stand out with our main message really stands out. Let's make it easier on our audience. And so just some other ideas would be to increase your font size. You know, you always want to be careful with font size. We 
try to bring things in from Excel that are pretty minimal so we can do a lot of the work within PowerPoint. Um, and so, for example, here we really are highlighting that 94%. And what you'll notice about these slides is that our focus is on communicating to farmers and crop consultants. So some of the changes in these slides aren't really necessarily well suited for your general academic audience, which I understand. And then lastly, you'll see a lot of recommendations that say to try and remove the legend or change the legend around. Otherwise, your audience is looking to the right of the legend and looking back at the pie graph, and maybe they quit listening to you. Maybe the legend just really isn't that important. Can you put those pieces of information closer to where they belong in the text? And then lastly, um, just continuing to try to simplify, refine, and remove pieces of information. Maybe you can use color to help you achieve some of what's achieved in adding additional words. So what we've done at Discovery Farms is really switched up our master slide. We've switched up our defaults. We're trying to force ourselves away from this default of a title and text to one of an assertion and evidence. And it's really helped us change the way that we communicate. Staff has said, and I've experienced that audience, the audience, instead of asking questions of things that we've kind of already discussed, they ask deeper, more thoughtful questions. We can tell that they're understanding what we're talking about a little better. It's been really effective. And the, the switch has been challenging, but I've also heard feedback from staff that the assertion evidence type slide really frees them up because when they would have a bunch of bullets, they'd either have to hit on all the bullets or they'd have to explain that they're not going to talk about the third bullet. But if there aren't bullets there, then no one really knows where you're headed. So you have an opportunity to change, to change direction and to change course a little bit without having to explain why you're doing that. Now I'll walk through a background example. So to me, this slide really represents the fact that it's a journey, because this was actually from my interview with Bootstrap. <laughs> and it's, a, it's kind of an unfortunate slide. I've learned a lot since then, and we've learned a lot since then. It's really text heavy. It's really plain. I don't know what the main point is. I'm really wasting space at the top left corner. I'm like, what's going on here, really? So the first thing I would do would be to just focus on one point a slide. I know that, and even I, you know, you think, okay, 30 slides, 30 minutes, I'm gonna spend a minute on each slide. But you can kind of change your, your attitude and change your perspective. The number of slides really doesn't have to dictate the length of the presentation. You really wanna focus on one main message a slide, and especially no more than three main messages a slide. <coughs> Otherwise, you're likely to lose people. More slides is really okay. So. This is like one step of improvement, right? Like I've got sort of one point, but even within that bullet, there's kind of a lot going on, several words bolded. Maybe you're still not clear what the message is. I'm not gonna remember this black and white slide a few days later. And so first, changing the assertion, just moving that sentence to the top of the slide really has a big impact. It's kind of powerful, now we've got a statement about what we do and pictures to go along with it. When you write these assertions at the top, you also want to be careful because apparently anything that's more than three lines long, people get tired and quit reading. So you want to try and keep it pretty short, pretty concise, think about your words, use them wisely. So maybe you just change it to this one line. Or maybe you just change it to the one really important piece of information. Discovery Farms is farmer-led. That's a big part of who we are. That's what we want people to walk away with. Then you'll notice that there are two pictures on this side. You've got one picture that's bigger, so I kind of feel like that picture is being emphasized. But then at the same time, you have this other picture that's smaller, but it's in front of the picture. So maybe that's the picture that's being emphasized. It's a little hard to tell. There's a lot of extra white space. Maybe this real estate could be used a little bit more wisely. So maybe you just make your pictures bigger, you have them stretched to the edge. Um, you'll also notice that I flipped the picture on the right because right now you have a finger pointing to a face and then a face looking at a finger and it's hard to know 
what direction you're headed in. It sort of bounced back and forth. So my, one of my bosses, he said he had two stories to tell, and so he wanted to have these two photos on slide. It was really important to him. And what I suggested, rather than having to say that he's telling a story about the picture on the left, and then telling a story about a picture on the right, he just breaks it up into two slides. He just has one big, bold picture at a time with farmer and on there. This is much more memorable. This is something that people are gonna hold on to. So if you think about it, we went from a title with four bullet points and then one sentence and we took away the extra words of that one sentence we added picture two pictures and then we narrowed it down even more now we have a big bold impactful photo with the words from our bed so those are are the main points about what discovery farms has done um, over the course of the past several years and changing our slides to show presentations I do have even more information and more points in here um, about color choice and creating your own color palette and things like that that really do make a difference. Uh, does anyone have any any questions or anything that's working really well for them when they give PowerPoint presentations? I've read some evidence that the um, certainly the assertion is is the right way to go, but that a, a, a full sentence is better on the brain for learning than uh, phrases. And, and, and your last part there about just <coughs> emphasizing that, that also makes sense. What, what have you seen in more recent research on learning? Yeah, that's a good question. And I kind of see, I see a lot of both recommended. And I just think it depends on what you're talking about. So like with that farmer-led message, I mean, though that phrase is really our, you know, it's really our point. It like doesn't need words on either side for explanation. But, right? but it leaves off the discovery farms. Yep. Yeah. Right. But it's, hopefully, it's a discovery farms presentation, and you know. But I think when it comes to, especially when it comes to discussions of research, that whole sentence is pretty is pretty valuable. The, uh, the gimmicks, the wing things, the animations, that kind of thing. Are we over that? I mean, we used to really try to bring all that. Yeah, things, right. Stuff in, and it's <laughs> about pretty distracting, and I notice you don't use any of that. Yeah, so that's a good question, and I think that gets to the point of simplifying. Uh, we, we really don't want to have anything extra. I think in addition to the wing dings and the fancy spinning in, you also want to think about what master slide you're using. So what um, what the like back of your slide throughout your presentation looks like. That in and of itself can be pretty distracting if you've got one that has like lots of color, lots of shapes. So you'll see that Discovery Farms has gone with a pretty a pretty simple slide deck and and no fancy movement. And so the way that I, if I'm like building a slide rather than having motion within a slide and actions, I'll actually just duplicate a slide and add pieces to it. I find that to be a more useful, valuable way to go. It, it does break down the field. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then the, the trick of using slide at the bottom, slide 19 of 26, you know, so your audience know. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah, that's true. Because if it looks like there's 100 slides or something, or 50, then it's like, oh my goodness, but some of them you might be going through pretty quickly. Do you have any recommendations as far as fonts, better fonts? And yeah, so that's a good Serif question. For saying serif. Yes, yeah. yeah. So serif generally means feet, so that's like a Times New Roman font. You see how it kind of has little feet. But then Arial is like a sans serif font, so it doesn't have those feet. What I my understanding is there are two pieces about that. If something is short, like if it's not a paragraph, then sans serif is the way to go. Uh, the nice thing about serif in paragraph form is it helps you string words together apparently better. But then it's changing with the digital age because uh, sans serif is easier to read on a screen. So in a PowerPoint presentation, I'd stick with your Arial or your sans serif fonts for the most part. But then 
in printed materials, I sort of go back and forth, but I'm moving, since so many people are reading things online, we're moving in more of a mostly sans serif direction. I think this is a really good way of presenting because it lets you uh, talk about the topic rather than just reading off those lines, uh, <coughs> remain or not, but still, I think you engage the audiences more than mm -hmm. just looking at that letting them read off of it. Just one sentence or one picture with the message is better than all of that other stuff. That yeah, thank we're, you. We're all guilty of pointing out there. Right, and it's really difficult. I mean, it's not easy. You know, this is really difficult because you don't have the crutch of your slide deck to help you. So, it, I mean, it takes time and it's definitely a process. But slowly, over the course of several years, really, our whole team has kind of gotten on board with this and we're seeing a big difference. What, what I've found in works is is to clean up, use master slides, mm -hmm. use three or four master slides within in that uh, um, PowerPoint. Change the, the default. PowerPoint is PowerPoint is, is is a great tool. The way it's set up is terrible. Yeah. The way we use it is terrible. Yeah. Change those those master slides. Get rid of the. the Footers at the slide, get rid of the text box, put up like you did, assertion and evidence, and, and start from there. And, um, and, and, and that works a lot better. Now, I have used effectively, I think, <coughs> somebody that was here yet last night can, can tell me, but um, few, very few words, but sometimes a, a list, of, a list of, of some concepts that I had five or six or eight single words and very short phrases in there. I'm not talking about each one, they're just examples of things I was talking about, referring to, and that triggered some, some ideas and actually some other discussion. Yeah, that's a good that's a good suggestion. And that piece about the master side I think is really key. I mean it pushes you to change for one. Like if you change your master side then it's gonna push you to change and it's just gonna make it more refined and easier to deal with and um, that sort of thing. And, 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 and if you use that, it also makes it easier. You don't have to um, change every slide for your format. You can have a few different formats and then use that master slide as puts that in. Change the fonts on the master slide so you don't have to remember to change them on every slide. Yep, exactly. And same goes with uh, your color palette. So you can right. create your own color palette and then getting away from default colors is something that I see you written about a lot. So having this master slide can really help with that as well. And I'll make one more comment and I'll shut up. It, sometimes our, our, our slides, the, the whole slide deck, the, the size matters. Yeah. And if it does, especially if it does, um, having, if you're going to have a background image for most of, or, or major part of your uh, presentation, put that on the background on the master slide, it's one image. If you repeat that image on every slide, you're multiplying that size and expanding the size because you, you've got multiple copies of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. All right, so now I want us to get into kind of small groups at tables. We're going to do a little bit of putting this into use. So I've created a slide about the Waste to Work conference, and I'm hoping you all can help me improve it. So basically, just think that you're asked by the Waste to Work conference organizers to include a slide in your slide deck to try and promote the conference and get people to attend. So I have big sheets of paper, and I have markers, and some photos, and scissors, and tape. Um, so if the people in the back will join and fill out some of these tables. We'll just kind of try out what we learned. And then um, we'll spend, so we'll do that for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes talk, and then we'll spend a few minutes talking about it. So you can put your ideas on here. You can also critique what's on the screen. We'll have a bit of a conversation. Um, and this is also something that I read a lot about, they suggest that you go analog. They, when you need to make a presentation, don't just immediately open the PowerPoint. Spend some time thinking about it, drawing, scribbling, moving things around, using post it notes. Um, that's it. So here's your chance.
let's finish up. We've got like six minutes left to the session before break. So let's finish what we're doing and then we'll have each group kind of show off their handiwork and talk about what they thought about in their groups. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five groups. So you get a minute apiece, basically, <laughs> to share what you put together. So who would like to go first? And if you haven't finalized your slide, you can talk about what you were going to do. Yep. Okay, great. Good. So if you can all finish up. Callie, do you want to come to the front? You can, or you can stand up. I think. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah. Okay, so we um, decided, you know, in terms of assertion and evidence, we even just took the title out and we used the logo up in the upper left hand corner for Waste to Worth. So, Waste to Worth, the nation's best science with innovative outreach in agriculture and the environment. And then, excuse the sick people, but if we had some other photos, we were thinking of like one more photo that was showing like producers interacting with extension or government agencies, that kind of thing, to kind of stress, you know, who should attend and this idea that it's very educational. So, awesome. and anything else you guys? That's all I got. Great. Thank okay. you. Nice, like, use of pictures and assertion at the top. And I felt like the same picture was missing from the pile. So, very good. Who wants to go next? <laughs> well, we were debating, so we went on the wording side <laughs> and the two slides. Uh, so we have the latest science advanced in using all light of resources while protecting our environment. And uh, so the waste would work and and on the second slide, you said, managing agricultural waste to the benefits of the farmers, the environment, and our society, and then everybody knows what that is. Awesome. Very good. I like your your assertions are nice and like comprehensive and really express what Waste to Work is all about. And you have the visual to go along with it, piece of evidence. Who wants to go next? <laughs> We, we tried to distill it down into um, the key messages that we thought were in there. So the first one was, what's your assertion? You should attend. There you go. That's a face mask that you need to advertise next time. Will be contacting you for the real slide. While a lot of the material up there is what you might read on the conference brochure. Mm -hmm. It's not what you want to see on a slide. Um, what is waste to worth? It's integrated science and outcomes. Or, I can't read it backwards now, but what's the rest of it? Agriculture. Animal agriculture and the environment. So, distill it down to the, to the key the message that you want me to get across. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and I really like how you thought about what needs to go on different materials. You know, and you're going to use different messages in different sentences and different words. That's a very good point. Next. Yeah. We, we'll, we'll go next, but we changed our minds. We like this. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, John. I'm here, they can't see it. Now, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we kind of went back and forth on, on different things here. Uh, again, I think borrowing from what, what you all have said, this now makes even more sense. <laughs> uh, we, first, we wrote out ways to work, but I think it was a better idea to have the uh, logo here, if there's a use of a logo. We started out with ways to work is the best conference on connecting people to spread science and solutions. And uh, I think uh, just, you know, this is a spreading manure, so it's a good idea of spreading science and solutions. We find a better picture, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we could have, it would be like the yeah, background. it was a, a bigger picture in the background. We could have, you know, made a, a better point there. Yeah. 
And we assume that, again, like what you said, you know, people who are interested in this and, and have some knowledge of manure management would be the people who are going to come into this conference anyway. It's not for, you know, the person who's spreading uh, lawn uh, fertilizer. So I think they should come to over. <laughs> you were clearly very thoughtful about who your audience was going to be for that slide and the next play on the words there. I stole yeah, it. that too. Oh, okay. So we went with less and more and more visuals. Um, we knew we, we wanted to at least highlight who and, and where you would see the logo and stuff, who brought it on. So we wanted their logo at the top, as well as highlight the Waste Board Conference. And we used a recycling symbol to help us know that this is a cycle of of science, innovation, and outreach all coming together for the work. And then we went into the next slide where we talk about who benefits and who should be there. Yeah. And your, your farmers, your, your, the people that deal with the spreading and they deal with the amendments, as well as um, people who deal with the animals and the, the nation. Nice. Those are slides that would be great, like coupled with you know your explanation as you're talking, good visuals. And I really like and appreciate the creative use of the waste store conference logo. Like coupling the recycling visual with those words is really impactful. So we're definitely out of time. I really appreciate you all being so willing to participate in that activity. And if you have any more questions for me, feel free. My email is on there. Ask me afterwards. Follow me later. We're trying to do one of these things I suggest, and we're having our time. So thank you very much. Thank you.